In this video, we're going to be looking at the top 10 worst Legacy of Darkness cards ever to be released. If you have not done so already, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you would like to see more future videos. The number 10 spot on this list goes to Double Snare. So Double Snare is a card with a very simple effect. The effect basically says that it can destroy one face-up card in the field that has an effect that negates trap card's effects. Overall, the card is just simply way too niche and specific as yes, it is actually an effective counter against cards that negate trap cards such as Jinzo or Royal Decree, but beyond that, there aren't really that many great cards nowadays that are utilized effectively that negate trap cards effects as the overall use of trap cards has actually been severely diminished over the years just because trap cards are essentially too slow and the fact that this card just really serves as a one specific counter card doesn't really make the card all that useful and vital now yes back in the old days when Jinza was very highly widely used I can definitely see that the card did have a little bit of use, but after that, not really necessarily so, so that's why the card is on this list. Number 9 on this list goes to Soul Demolition. So this one is a continuous track card that says that you can only activate the card's effect when you have a fiend type monster on your side of the field, and then you get to pay 500 light points to use the effect. The actual effect is that both players select one monster card from their opponent's graveyard and then you both banish those cards. So the effect is incredibly mediocre for the specific times of when you can activate it and the cost as well. Paying 500 light points so that you can each banish cards, that's not exactly a good thing. On top of that, you need to have a face up fiend monster you control to actually use the effect. You see, if you want to banish cards, there are much better cards out there. Obviously the entire DD archetype is utilized for that, but beyond that, there's other cards that are just much better, such as maybe Soul Release, and a lot of other cards that work a lot more universally well or just have good general effects to banish cards. Not that Soul Release is a good card, because it's not, but at least it can be played a lot better than just this card. So overall, that's why the card is here. It's just way too specific on when it can be used, as well as that life point cost is just thrown on there for no particular reason. So yeah, that's why the card is actually number 9 on this list. Number 8 on this list goes to Winged Minion. So this one is a fiend type monster with 700 attack and defense, so fairly low stats. And the effect says that you can tribute this face-up card to select one face-up fiend monster on the field and increase the attack and defense of the monster by 700 points as long as it remains face-up on the field. So this effect would have actually been pretty good if they implemented one more thing to this card that could have made it great, and that's to make it a quick effect. Unfortunately, the effect is not a quick effect. This means that you can only activate the effect on your turn, and because of that, it's very lackluster and mediocre. Essentially what you're doing is if you compare this to equipped spell cards that have basically the same attack bonus or similar ones, such as Malevolent Nuzzler or even better ones like Axe of Despair, those cards are generally a lot better. For one, a lot of equipped spell cards that generate attack bonuses give more than 700. On top of that, because those are equipped spell cards, they actually don't need to utilize an extra normal summon compared to Wing Minion. For example, Let's say you top deck a wing minion, you have to summon it and then tribute it to get rid of it and then generate that attack bonus to your fiend. However, if you top deck an act of despair, you can simply just activate the card, not requiring your normal summon. In addition, those cards also just have more universal use because they can be activated on any monster and equipped on them, as opposed to wing minion who only works for fiend type monsters. It also doesn't help that the card has relatively low and really shit stats, so that's another problem. But overall, these reasons are why the card finds itself on the number 8 spot on this list. Number 7 on this list goes to Fuji no Tori. So this one here is actually a fire monster with an effect that's honestly not that great. First of all, it's a spirit monster. And when it comes to spirit monsters, the majority of cards that were the first wave of spirits were, to be honest, not very useful cards. Fusion Notori is one of the worst ones to ever be released, simply because, well, it's a very lackluster effect. 
Basically, in case you don't know, spirit monsters all have a very similar effect in that they cannot be special summoned and that they must return to the owner's hand during the end phase of the turn that it's normal summon or flip face up. However, the unique effect of Fusionatorium is that when it inflicts battle damage to your opponent's life points, you get to increase your life points by an amount equal to the battle damage. First of all, the effect has to do with gaining life points. Any effect that has to do with gaining life points is inherently already going to be a not so good effect. Unless of course a specific card has other effects that go beyond just healing life points because that by itself is honestly not very good. In addition to that, it only has 1200 attack. I would actually understand this a little bit more and kind of get it if this was kind of like an 1800 attack beat stick that you summon gain some life points by destroying a monster and doing some battle damage or attacking directly and then going back to your hand, which would still make it a pretty bad card in many ways, but at least it's a high attack monster, you know? Instead they gave it to a card with very bad stats, just very bad stats. And lastly, it's a really weird type and attribute combination being a fire wing beast. So I don't know where that came from, but overall the card is just really, really bad and it's one of the worst spirit monsters to be released, so that's why the card is here on this list. Next up on this list is Feng Sheng Mirror. So this one here is actually a normal spell card that has a very simple effect. It says, look at your opponent's hand, select and discard one spirit monster to the graveyard, if of course there are any spirit monsters in their hand. So, this is a really bad effect in a lot of ways. Now, initially, you might think that this is the worst effect ever and you might be asking why is this not number one because it's so specific and who in their right mind runs a bunch of spirit monsters the answer is pretty much nobody however if you take a look a little bit beyond this you'll actually see that there's a little bit of utilization with this effect even if your opponent does not have any spirit cards you can still activate this card and take a look at your opponent's hand then of course if they don't have any then okay they don't discard anything but at least you get to look at your opponent's hand which means that you're getting to see essentially information from your opponent on what they have in their hand which is great right well here's what's bad about it there's actually a bunch of other cards that are just overall much better for actually looking at the opponent's hand historically there's been cards like dd designator or mind crush that have just been utilized a lot more for looking at the opponent's hand because they offer additional effects and potentially additional resources for you even if you don't guess a card correctly in other words you have to either discard a card or banish a card depending on the card that you activate and hopefully you're banishing or discarding a card that can utilize an effect through that which is why those cards are much better function mirror is just a straight up minus one by looking at your opponent's hand which isn't the worst thing in the world but it's definitely pretty bad especially when there's much better alternatives out there that have just much more utilization. Number 5 on this list goes to Nutrient Z. This one is a normal trap card that says, during damage calculation, when you are about to take 2000 or more battle damage, gain 4000 life points first. Well, gaining 4000 life points from an attack, honestly, that's pretty good, right? However, what's really bad about this card is of course the activation condition. First of all, it's a battle trap which means you can only activate it when your opponent basically declared an attack and now you're in damage calculation. After that, you need to fulfill the criteria and condition of actually taking more than 2000 battle damage in just one attack, which that already, although it's not gonna be the most uncommon thing in the world, it does severely limit its capabilities, which is already a big problem. And lastly, despite gaining 4000 life points and that being a huge chunk, once again, it has to do with light points, and that's not a very good thing. If you wanted to gain light points through a battle trap, there's actually much better cards out there. Cards such as Draining Shield, a card that actually negates the attack completely of an opponent's monster, and then you gain that many life points. The problem with Nutrient Z is that you have to let the attack go through. Assuming your opponent attacks you directly, you would simply gain 4,000 light points and then get attacked directly with that much damage, which in many cases, you're actually in a worse situation compared to Draining Shield that can negate an attack and then give you that many life points. And if the opponent is attacking a monster, if you use Nutrient Z, you have to let the attack go through, and then you gain your life points. Draining Shield, once again, negates that attack completely, and you gain life points, so you also get to protect your monster. I'm not saying Draining Shield is the best card in the world, by any means, definitely not, because it's actually a really bad card as well. 
but it's a lot better than Nutrient Z. This card is just way too specific in terms of what it can do, and then once it does the thing, it's not even that great. The next card on the list is Life Absorbing Machine. This one is a continuous trap that also has to do with gaining life points. It just seems that Konami really wanted to make this whole gaining life points theme around Legacy of Darkness for whatever reason. Anyway, the card says that during your standby phase, you get to gain life points equal to half of the total life points you paid during your last turn. The card gets an even worse spot than the other life point gain cards because it's even more specific. First of all, the card will only activate once per turn during your standby phase and then you gain only half the life points of what you paid in your previous turn. Specifically, what makes the card even worse than the other gained life point cards is the fact that it's saying the word paid. In other words, if you got any battle damage inflicted to you or any effect damage, basically losing any life points outside of paying, you don't gain those life points to this card. You only gain the life points specifically if you paid. Cards like Imperial Order, or Messenger of Peace, or maybe the Archfiend archetype. Those kinds of cards, yes, those are going to be utilized with Life and Machine to gain half of the paid life points. However, even with that, do you really want to run this card? Let's say you activate Imperial Order, you pay 700 life points, and then your following turn, you gain 350 from that. What is that going to benefit you in any way? There's no way that's ever going to help you. Gaining an extra 350 life points? That's horrible. That's why this card is on this list because it's just honestly a really bad card and one of the worst life point gain cards ever to be released. Number three on this list goes to Lizard Soldier. So Lizard Soldier, this goes with that theme of finding that one shitty vanilla monster in every booster pack. Lizard Soldier has really bad stats compared to other Legacy of Darkness cards that were released. Now it's not the worst in terms of stats for vanilla monsters in the set because there's actually other cards, Robo Lady and Robo Yaru, who have actually worse stats than Lizard Soldier, but the reason why they're not on here is because they at least have a little bit of support. Cards like Super Robo Yaru and Super Robo Lady that, even though they're not that great, at least it's support. In other words, it makes sense why these really bad cards got some support. Lizard Soldier, however, it's just not a very good card. It's really bad. So that's why this card is number three on this list, because it's a very horrible vanilla monster. Number two on this list goes to Bubble Crash. Bubble Crash is a normal trap card that says that it can only be activated when any player has six or more cards on the field and or in their hand, meaning it can be combined from both. And then, if those conditions are fulfilled, the players then select and send cards to their respective graveyards until the amount remaining on the field and in their hand is five. So basically, the activation conditions are a little bit tough. Not the toughest thing in the world, but they are a little bit tough. So while it is getting rid of cards on the field and potentially for your opponent, it's one of the worst ways to remove cards. First of all, it's way too specific in terms of when you can activate it. And second of all, it can also negatively affect you as well if you are also over that criteria in cards. If you want to get rid of opponent's cards, there's much better ways to do it such as Raigeki or Heavy Storm, but those are only some examples. There's obviously way more ways to actually get rid of problematic cards that your opponent has, and Bubble Crash is just not an effective way. The fact that it's also a trap card and not even a quick play spell card also makes it even worse. If it was a quick play spell card, you could at least activate it on your turn right when you draw it, which I'm not saying that would be a good card by any means because it wouldn't, but at least it would be slightly better to the point where I probably wouldn't put it at the number 2 spot on this list. And lastly, the number 1 worst card in Legacy of Darkness is Gradius' Option. So this one is a light level 1 monster with unknown attack and defense. So its effect basically says that the card cannot be normal summon or set. That's a great start, right? After that, it says that this monster can only be special summoned by selecting one face of Gradius on your side of the field. And then, the attack and defense of this card becomes the same as the attack and defense of the selected Gradius. And if the selected Gradius is removed from the field, destroy this card. This card is horrible. Absolutely horrible. First of all, who would ever run a Gradius? Well, the answer is nobody. But let's assume that somebody was actually running a Gradius. What would make you want to use Gradius' option as opposed to another Gradius? Let's say I summon a Gradius and it somehow survives. Yes, I fulfill the condition that I can actually special summon the card, 
onto the field, but then its attack is only going to be the same stat as the Gradius. In other words, why don't I just run another Gradius that can be normal summon or set, as well as special summoned? You see what I'm talking about here? It's so bad. And then the last sentence, I have no idea why they even put this on the effect, but if that Gradius is removed from the field, then this card is also destroyed. I am not understanding this one bit. And if you make an argument and say, well, that's because they give Gradius some fantastic support cards to give it so much attack. I mean, yes, it does have support, but it's called Cyclone Laser. In other words, it's a really bad card that only gives it plus 300 attack. So if you want to get a 1500 attack monster on the field by having a Gradius with Cyclone Laser on the field, sure. Or, you know, you can just run a fucking vanilla monster with 1800 attack and that thing is already better and it can be special summon. Plus, it can also be normal summon or set. Plus, it wouldn't be removed from the field if Gradius is removed. Plus, you wouldn't be limited to only summoning it if only Gradius is on the field. Do you see where I'm going out here? So many limitations. All for just getting a shitty monster on the field that's honestly just really convoluted and I don't understand what made Konami want to release such a horrible card. This card actually goes down on the list for one of the worst cards ever to be released. And that's why this card gets the number one spot, and very rightfully so. And that is it for the top 10 worst Legacy of Darkness cards ever to be released. So if you have not done so already, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you would like to see any more future videos. And as always, I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye everyone, I hope you all have a great and a fantastic day.